Finland Saga Season 2, Episode 15. How do you process any of this if you're Garter? Episode 15, Storm. It feels like he was just on a crazy rampage and maybe he's had a moment for it, it all to catch up to him. I don't think he was, he got the reaction he was expecting from Arnhade. There's just so much, so much going on. So much happened all at once. She's not waiting for the storm to pass. Storm's here. This is one of those life altering events, perhaps. It's a huge choice. So much for any kind of stealth or sneaking in to see him. I mean, fair. He's doing his job. And there's that. I mean, she's definitely made up her mind. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't think she even knows what she's gonna do or what she can do or what she wants to do. She's just following like an impulse. Come here. She couldn't sit by and wait. It was so well done last episode, the conversation with Sverkel and the metaphor of waiting for the storm to pass. Her situation is, is just so impossibly complicated. It's hard to know what's the right answer. This figure from her past shows up to disrupt her stability, things she's built for herself, her conception of where she is and her future plans. But as Sverkel's point, there's something here that's important. I mean, that's evidenced just by the fact that she has this impulse, right? It would take its toll for her to totally ignore it. Also, there are huge risks and could take a huge toll by her indulging it. I think one way to navigate is to differentiate what kind of drive it is. I I think there's maybe two that I can think of in this situation. One is that kind of impulse. It's like screaming at you that it's dangerous, a terrible idea, but you're possessed by the thought of doing it to the point where you're willing to let certain things burn, your plans, your concept of self, your safety even. There's another type that's related, but I think is quantitatively different. When you know in your heart something is the right thing to do, for you in terms of your concept of what's right and wrong. A lot of times that's counter to that impulse, counter to an impulse. I think those are generally worth following, even though they're more difficult. Like if you know in your heart something is right or something is wrong, that thing can probably reliably be safely pursued or ignored for your betterment. And even if the circumstances fall out of your favor, there's a resolution in knowing you did the right thing that tends to make it okay, as long as you're avoiding game over events like death. Though, for the impulse motivation I mentioned first, I wouldn't say it's wrong to follow that. In fact, I think there's probably very important, significant reasons why you have that impulse. I just think that you have to follow that with your eyes wide open, understanding what a risk it is, and then trying to get what you need out of it and learn what you need, resolve what you need to resolve while protecting yourself, because that's when you're most vulnerable. Oftentimes, those impulses are the ticket to like real destiny, but that destiny is not necessarily good. You know, it represents, I would guess, some call to one's darkness or something. That's, I think, part of what makes this so exciting about Arnhade going to visit Garter, who's just this total dark slave Jesus character from her past with love and passion and tragic history, risking a tremendous amount to follow her gut. This guy's really going on a limb for her. It was her eyes, her passion. That woke him up. He seems a lot softer now. Like, he does seem like he came out of some kind of trance. He's getting beat to hell by Snake. <laughs> Contributed to that somewhat. This is so... ripe with history. Tension. I don't even know. Yeah, they beat the crap out of him. The dull side of the sword. Still kind of not clear. No, this is not, this is not it. They'd be wiser to shut, shut their mouths. I'm telling on you, to kettle. Oh, that just makes it even more gut-wrenching and more difficult. Ugh. 
he just gave her so much, but in a way, uh, he kind of cursed her. <laughs> Speaking of following your heart. Here comes a storm. This guy. These these soldiers, mercenaries. He's giving us. I mean, I feel so conflicted. I appreciate tremendously the pure expression and the apology. There's something so powerful about an apology that nails it. Like if you really are at fault, let's say in a relationship, and you you actually can identify what you've done, really feel it, and articulate it in a way that takes maximal responsibility for that thing. Man, is that powerful. That is such a bond. The opposite is true of an apology for effect. That's something that's not really your fault and is not based on truth. That is a repellent. People apologize sometimes to curry favor, and that's kind of gross. That speech by Gardner hit pretty hard. What's kind of unfortunate about it though is that he's putting such a burden on Arnheed because he's simultaneously being good but kind of incoherent. Like he's not really thinking about the circumstances or the gravity of the situation or the reality. He's forcing all of that on her shoulders. Like cut me free, let's start over the new life and our kid. Like that is just there's no world that they're currently in where that's happening without some just absolutely astounding events taking place. Which what is Arnie supposed to do with that? <laughs> This is like the one guy. This one guy actually like is decent. In this whole lot. Maybe Kanu will come and dispense with them. I'll be sure to be super sad about that. Wrap it up. <laughs> Wrap up the waterworks. Relatable. There's the beast. Damn, just straight up, literally for the jugular. Okay, I'm actually glad he survived that. It doesn't seem halfway bad. No, no. Oh, no. I was relieved way too soon. Now she has something to cut with. This is what happens when you can't say no to women. <laughs> Relatable. But it's just this situation's got endlessly more complicated. Now, now it's just forced. If she doesn't cut his ropes, he's dead for sure. Even more surely dead than before. This is so much on her shoulders right now. It's just so much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that is. Subtitles are accurate. 100% accurate. She's gonna follow this dude into hell if she follows him. He came in with the the goal or the idea of saving her, but the more I watch this all play out, the more it feels like it, it was selfish. Like, it's just for him. It's a fantasy, almost, of him coming in and rescuing. He's the one who needs rescuing. I don't just mean from the ropes, just mentally. It's so great on some level. It's so powerful, and, I, I, you know, it's beautiful. He's not strong enough. He doesn't have the backbone to, like, carry the the raw passion and emotion and heroicness of his woman. He's just a mess. Poor Arnie, like, this is just a pattern for her. People don't really consider her station in things, what she wants, you know? She's got Kettle, who is forcing her to be a mistress. Got Einar, who's a sweet guy and obviously likes her, but also has the same kind of fantasies about, I'm going to save Arnheed, I'm going to take her off the island, without really thinking about her agency in the situation. And then Garner, is her, her ex-husband, is implicitly requesting that they live as outlaws and kill a bunch of people to escape and risk her, her life. Just killed a soldier in front of her, potentially implicating her in this whole thing. Meanwhile, this poor girl is just trying to live her life and be a good person and do the right thing and survive. The storm is right. Speaking of impulse leading to darkness. Snake's having a rough day at work. Not far away. Maybe harder to track him in the rain though. He's not using the blunt end of his blade anymore. Yeah, that seems pretty clear. Where are the boys? Sitting by. Understandable. 
俺を見張ってたのか夜のうちに俺が無茶をしでかすと思ったか Yeah, I was about to say that Einar is going to be the one more affected by the situation, whereas Thorfinn doesn't really have a dog in this fight, except that he's concerned for Einar. She's doing a great job of that herself already, not that it's her fault. And that, Thorfinn will likely agree strongly. Except what that shows is a really deep understanding of it. You wouldn't guess these days. You wouldn't guess any of the events of season one. Why are you getting so upset yeah, that tiny thing, <laughs> that small, small idea. Yeah, that much has been made abundantly clear. It's super celebrated, yeah. It's just the system, it's a world where force is just the, the whole thing. And the more prevalent it is, the more it's necessary to use yourself. But Thorfinn is such a rarity. Self shoulder pat. Yeah, that's self affirmation, though. Man, that dream was really something. So, so pulling him down. He's now paralleling, paralleling Thor's in a way. In that dream episode, I think it was episode 9, Thor's also was being pulled down by the dead, but he's able to stand. Thorfinn is starting to be able to do that as well. Symbol of his change. It's not that either of them have lost the, the baggage of their evil deeds. It's just the, the quality of their actions and their, their outlooks, despite their wrongdoings. Thorfinn, I think, answered one of his own questions in that speech. The question of, how could I have let myself done that for so long without thinking about the people I was killing? I think that to get to those depths, it's, it's more of a process. It doesn't start with the worst evil. It starts with a, a minor concession a lot of the time. I'm sure almost everyone has had the experience, just on a normal life level, not at all on this level, of saying or thinking something like, just this once, you know, this is wrong, but eh, this time it's okay because X, Y, Z. There's like this threshold that once you cross, you know, you do something new, that's now your baseline. You don't have to do that very often for that to become just normal. A more trivial example of that would be like spending money, you know, like what you're comfortable spending on any one purchase can increase just by making one of those purchases, if that makes sense. And before you know it, you're operating comfortably at a level that at one point would have been unthinkable for you just because you got there gradually and through pattern and habit. And often that's coupled with an underlying philosophy that supports it and is particularly or specifically or deliberately crafted to enable that because it would be more difficult to resist it. As Thorfinn points out in the answer to his question, it's just really difficult to be anything but what these Viking warriors are because of the dangers that they face and because of the society they face, the, the reward incentives. Like, you kill people, you get slaves, you know, and you get gold and you get women, you get accolades. Wisdom and self-control and discipline are difficult and so they're rare, they're scarce. There's always going to be kind of a lowest common denominator that one has to fight. Base impulses are easy. That's nothing. So that will prevail. That will dominate. Crazily, that gives more responsibility to the individual who can see past it, who can get out of the kind of automatic, deterministic person who just follows what is the most obvious, easiest incentives. Man, his hands tell a whole story. Shades of Roy Mustang. Still looking for Vinland, but has so much more clarity now. Fair question. That's the real challenge, yeah. It's easy to be idealistic when there's no danger or threat. Especially some of the Vikings can't, can't reach. Honestly, 
あるのかそんな土地がある忘れていた Yeah, yeah, he's remembering Finland, imagine him and leave going together 恐ろしく遠いとも聞かされてたし正確な場所もわからないしかも国づくりだ大勢の仲間外れを連れて行かなきゃならない It's just a dream right now. It also feels a little bit like a placeholder, which is fine. Like, we all know. It doesn't matter what land he goes to. He's not going to solve the problem of war and violence. But it is something he can get his hands on, and it is something he can create that gives him a plan of action that can just be good. You know, it can be better. It could be a contribution in some way, even, or especially if it's at a small local level. Rather than thinking so broadly, you know, saving the world, you, like, have this pocket of influence. You make that pocket of influence as good as you can. You do your part in that, and you trust in the effects that will have. You trust that you're, you're a strong node in The grid as strong a note as you possibly can be. You do your best to demand that from others as well with your words and actions, and you believe in the profound but perhaps unseen consequences of the good that you do. You can never undo evil, you can't erase evil. The only thing you can do is to do good, and fortunately, that does end up being a pushback against evil. It may seem like nitpicking, but I think the stated goal of eliminating evil, as opposed to doing good, has a very large possibility of creating evil. That is maybe the Canute philosophy to a certain extent. Consolidate. Power by any means necessary, and then wield this excessive force to destroy the evil. For me, at least narratively speaking, Canute's path is clearly a dark one, whereas Thorfinn, just looking to do good by taking a small community overseas, founding a new land governed by new principles, feels positive even if it's a little bit idealistic at this point, which I guess he's recognizing. It's exciting to hear him talk about it, it just feels good. <laughs> I'm just kind of talking about the whole show there. It's like suddenly this uplifting, beautiful show came out of the carnage and, and war and destruction of season one. Better not fall on their shoulders. Hey, that's our home you're talking about. It's gotta come in and mess up their, their living room, just like that. And Garb is now cast. Arnie's an outcast. What do you do with that? Swirl didn't just die, did he? Man, Snake's on a mission. Snake's awake. He just woke up. Feels like we're getting to see some of the, the old Snake that he's been hiding. It's such a great episode. Such an emotionally compelling episode in a season of great emotionally compelling episodes. Arnie's situation, man, I have so much sympathy for her. I was saying early on that following that impulse, it will lead to your destiny, right? It, it's there for a reason. It's, it's an impulse for a reason. It's because it's potent and is interwoven with who you are. But like that destiny will lead you into darkness and it's not guaranteed you will survive it. It's not guaranteed you'll make it out. So you follow that at your own own peril. Garter also is fascinating just because there's something so beautiful about his gestures. But he's not there. He's just not red. I don't know. There's something missing. He's not a fully formed man. There's a sadness and desperation and willful ignorance in, in his whole outlook and what he's demanding of Arnie. Then sort of the restatement of Thorfinn's aims. What I like about it is narrowing it down to something that's actionable. Ending war, ending slavery, it's great as a guiding principle. It's just too big to start with and there are just certain realities of the world, I believe, that you you can't stamp out human evil more than you can stamp out human nature. Even solving a lot of the material problems that lead to evil, humans will find a way, you know? If human society developed to the point where everyone had everything they needed, people would just make problems because like we just were wired for it. We need challenge. This refocuses it to a good that he can do a task, a project that he can do that actually probably would help people that would challenge the prevailing sentiments and ethics of the world that he lives in. I don't know, the, the way I look at it, being a, a very strong, solid, ethical piece of the world is bigger than it appears. Despite all the, the grand gestures and hero stories and perhaps more selfish motivations like wanting attention, wanting validation, wanting to be told that you're good, playing your role in a way that's maximizing your potential as a human being and is true to your heart and is refined and crafted and self-honest to the point where you can look at your, your own darkness and understand your own motivations and just do a very good job even at just a tiny local level you just nail that you know nail your own life that's almost unbelievable how good it is that for Thorfinn actually could be pretty big based on his potential his capability his experience his depth of understanding so it feels good like Einar said I feel excited to see him go on this journey and man just as a, as a final thought best bro Einar just 
right there with him. Asks some honest, realistic, hard-hitting questions, but overall is there and supports.